Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is 5090, November 12, question paper 11. And we're going to be discussing question 21 to question 40 in this video. This is the second video. Question 21, which changes will occur when a person walks from a very cold room into a hot room? From a very cold room into a hot room, what has happened? Sweating will increase and the blood vessels will dilate. Vasodilation from a very cold room into a hot room. So that is what we have to understand is this is going to result in which problems it is going to result in. So it's going to result in, of course, more sweating because the person is going to lose, has to lose more heat. Then question 22, which, what happens when the eye when a person walks from a dark room into sunlight? So dark room was when the pupil was dilated. Now the pupil has to decrease so we have to look at the decrease part. So it could either be A or C. So if it has to decrease the pupil size, then the circular muscles have to contract and the radial muscles of the iris have to relax. So this was the basic thing. The pupil side has to decrease. Then coming on to question number 23, the diagram shows a section of the brain. What could be a result of damage to the part labeled X? X is the hypothalamus. So that was the inability to control body temperature because the hypothalamus controls the thermoregulation and osmoregulation. Question 24, a person with diabetes mellitus is receiving treatment with insulin injection. The graph shows how the person's blood glucose concentration changed during part of one day. At what point was insulin injection given? Anything which is going to lower the blood glucose because at that point was insulin so during part of one day so when is he going to be was he given it at a or b or c you can see b and c it's nearly the same it's not changing and a is the one where there's a rapid decrease after that which component of tobacco smoke may cause lung cancer everybody knows that tar uh, carbon monoxide causes a carboxy hemoglobin so reduced oxygen carrying capacity nicotine causes vasoconstriction and nicotine is addictive and carbon dioxide of course will form normally it's nothing to have anything to do with that 26 the diagram shows some of the stages in cheese production at which stage in the production of cheese are the bacteria added you see as soon as the milk we add bacteria and then it coagulates and the curd is separated and then dehydration and then storage so everybody knew that it's in stage a either you knew it or you didn't know it. it's factual there's nothing to really read into it 27, the diagram shows a fermenter use the production of antibiotics, water out, water in, stirring paddles. Where do air and nutrients enter and where do antibiotics and waste leave? So stirring paddles, so you're given choices of W, X, Y, Z. Now you know W was nutrients in. Now how did you figure that out? Because there's just a plain pipe which goes into it. Why had to be what? Why had to be air? Why? Because you see, this is the thing which was telling you, which has got these holes in it. It's just something like this. Why? Because so that the air doesn't gush into it and throw away and blow away the microorganisms and the food. So that is why you have this sort of a, uh, a mesh here. And there was, of course, there was a little gap here and you had, this was the tube which was bringing in the air. So this was the air part. This was the one you had to really figure out which one was air. So but air was between B and C and then you had to figure out where would antibiotics out. So antibiotics out would be at Z. This is where it was being coming out, the antibiotics. And nutrients in, nutrients in was at W. So nutrients came in here. So this is where the nutrients came in and of course X was the wastes out because there's an arrow which is going out of it. So waste means carbon dioxide was a waste and that would be going out of that. So this was the waste part. So a difficult question but I mean I'm sure the air was a bit of a clue and you have to do this. The diagram shows a part of a food web, grass, sheep, fox, decomposing organisms, cows, humans, trees, insects, birds. What is the original source of energy for this food web? Well, everything you see producer is sunlight. That's a syllabus point. 
sunlight results in the producer to cause light energy to convert into chemical energy so that is the main thing source of energy for this food web that is always that's the first point of the ecology chapter syllabus the non cyclical nature of energy flow question 29 uh, the table shows the mean dry mass of the organisms in a food chain and then of course we have producers what mean dry biomass was gram per meter square 540 herbivores 26 carnivore was 2 which pyramid of biomass is correct for this food chain so pyramid of biomass means the mass so this would be 40 540 so this would be the biggest and then of course it gradually decreases 26 and then 2 so that is why c was the answer Question 30: The diagram shows part of the carbon cycle. Which process causes the largest amount of carbon to be converted from one form to another? So, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to carbon compounds is photosynthesis. This is the biggest process. So, photosynthesis is then what is it equal to? It is equal to three things: respiration, carbon dioxide, and decomposition. Respiration, not carbon dioxide. Sorry. respiration combustion and decomposition so this is what we have to understand is that the part coming out photosynthesis was the major amount of carbon to be converted into one form to the other carbon dioxide to glucose the rest of it is of course returning carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and the combustion is again burning fossil fuel and decomposition is of course uh, the process by which dead organic matter is decomposed and carbon dioxide is returned to the atmosphere then coming on to 31 which area of the diagram best describes mosquitoes well they are parasites and they are vectors they are not pathogens they don't cause the disease the cause the disease is the plasmodium which is a protozoa so uh, which diagram best describes mosquitoes Well, thirty-two. The presence of high concentration of nitrogen-containing fertilizer in a pond can lead to the death of fish. Well, what is the sequence of events? Now, sequence of events is very simple. You see, it says in the exam report as well. The nitrates will promote the growth of algae, which will die and rot, and thus causing more oxygen and leading thus thus using more using more oxygen and leading to the death of the fish. So increase in algae, algae die. Increase in number of bacteria because now there's a lot of dead, rotten stuff which the bacteria are food for bacteria. So when the bacterial number from one million go up to ten million, well they're going to use up the oxygen of the water. So this drop in oxygen is going to kill the fish. The kill the fish was of course given in the question, death of the fish. The diagram presents gametes P and Q. So these are gametes. So these have to be haploid. And using to give rise to a cell, so this is diploid, and this must be the zygote. Then it results in again, so P and Q fusing to give cell R. So this would be 2N, and then and this uh, give cell R, and then cell R then produces gametes. So these are all N again. Haploid gametes are always haploid. Which statement about the number of chromosomes in the cells and gametes is correct? the number of chromosomes in p and s are the same yes it would be n n in p and n in s so chromosomes would be the same the number of chromosomes p and q are different no p and q would have the same number of chromosomes the number of chromosomes in s is 1 quarter r no it can't be 1 quarter is half r the number of chromosomes in t is half in q no 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 this is n So this is n again. So it couldn't half in q. So this was unless you knew what gametes were, you could only do this question if you knew that. Question thirty four: Six bean seeds were soaked in cold water. Three of them were boiled and cooled. The boiled and the non-boiled seeds were chopped up and then placed on the surface of agar jelly containing starch. After two days, all the seeds were removed and the jelly was tested with iodine. The diagram shows the result. So boiled seeds on one side, they did not have a clear blue. What what was happening in the non-boiled seeds? What they were they were receiving amylase, and the starch was being digested. So the area around it would have no starch in it. So no starch in it. When you added iodine, it will remain yellow brown. And if starch was present, it would turn black. 
Now you look at the non-boiled seed had all this yellow brown area. The rest of it was all black. The position of the chopped seeds at start of the experiment. What is the explanation of the results with the non-boiled seeds? They contain amylase. The non-boiled bean seeds contain amylase. That is why the amylase was coming out and digesting the starch. Question number 35, which row describes the exchange of substances in the placenta? Oxygen, glucose, and antibodies pass from the mother to the fetus. Passing from the fetus to the mother, carbon dioxide and urea. Next question, 36, how do condoms reduce the risk of HIV infection? They prevent seminal fluid from coming in contact with the vaginal wall. The semen stays inside the condom, so it won't come in contact with the vaginal wall and, of course, pass on the virus. And the other way around, the woman could have the virus or the man could have the virus. 37. Which method could not be used to produce human insulin from genetically engineered bacteria? Yeah, that's a question which was challenged. And that's a very, very challenging question. And, you know, everybody, you've been asking me this question a million times. And you see, homogenized bacteria. Insulin is extracted from homogenized bacteria. That was the wrong answer. Because from if you homogenized it, well, you would break up the insulin also into tiny pieces. So the insulin would not be intact. And question 38, one gene has two co-dominant alleles, AE and AF, and one recessive allele, AG. You see, what they're doing is they're giving you the same alleles as they give you in the blood group. IA and IB is dominant, and IO is recessive. So the O is this one now, and this is this one now, and this is this one now, the AF. So how many different genotypes and phenotypes are possible? Genotypes are six and phenotypes of four, same as the blood one. You know, genotypes, we have IA, IA, and IA, IO, right? So two, then for, this is for A group. Then for uh, B group, you have to understand is for B group, what do we have? For B group, we have again IB, IB, and IB, IO, right? So two, four genotypes, one, two, three, four genotypes. Then for O group, what do we have? For O group, we have IO, IO, so six. And then for AB, we have IA, IB. So these were one, two, three, four, five, and six genotypes. And four phenotypes. Four phenotypes were, of course, the A group, the B group, the O group and the AB group. So four phenotypes. We only have four physical features, like we have four blood groups. That's it in all humans all over the world. And coming to the last two questions, question 39. Some normal fruit flies are subjected to radiation in laboratory. As a result, they produce offspring with unusual characteristics, such as white eyes. What causes this? Exposure to radiation, lab, mutation, Rest was all wrong. Question 40, what would be the genotype of the offspring from a cross between two organisms with the genotype big T, small t? So if you cross big T, small t into big T, small t, then what are they going to be? It says what would be the genotype? So we get big T, big T, big T, small t, half, so 50%. Quarter and small t, small t, a quarter. So out of four, you had one out of four here and one out of four here and two out of four here. So this was two out of four would mean half, one out of two. So quarter, big T, big T, quarter, small t, small t, and half, half would be this one. These would be the ones, half. So two out of four means one out of two means half. So this was not a very difficult question, but I know you all would find it difficult. Okay, that finishes this uh, paper, and thank you very much, and uh, all the very best for your exams tomorrow.